two people to a bench, and we practice so, social distancing on the sides here. So I'm on the other side? Yes, sir. On behalf of our director at the Jacksonville National Cemetery, our condolences to the family, friends, and loved ones who have come to celebrate this ongoing service for a true American hero. At this time, we'll have a military honor. There will be fine of weapons, so please prepare yourself.
accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation of your law firm's honorable and dedicated service. Thank you.
something. This is not, uh, this is not exactly what I expected. I think the memorial service to the board, but the Marine Corps does it best. Right. And it's going to be hard for me to speak with a straight face. My loss. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news. He sent me to bind up brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, freedom to those who must be bound, to proclaim the Lord's favor and comfort to all who mourn, to bring joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland, a wreath instead of ashes the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the robe of praise instead of a wilting spirit. This service is set in a year that, from all intents and purposes, practical purposes could be described as pretty crummy. Um, a lot of stuff going on that's unpleasant and unfair. And in the midst of it, one thing has happened that happened last year also, and the year before that year before that, and that is death. Um, Grandpa's head. And that is the real issue. Despite all the issues that happen in our world today, the ultimate issue is death. That's the one thing. Okay, you can listen to Oprah, you can listen to Bill Maher, Stephen Colbert, ABC, CNN, the left in politics, the right in politics, the late night shows, the early morning shows, everyone kind of tends to agree that something is wrong and that something needs to be fixed and death is the ultimate issue, the ultimate thing that is wrong. If Grandpa was not a great guy, he wasn't a perfect dad, he wasn't absolute and consummate model husband. He wasn't the best Marine of all time. He wasn't perfect. He wasn't really righteous. In fact, he was a sinful man. Categorically, Grandpa was a sinner. And on June 23rd, he experienced the ultimate result of sin. God's uh, Word tells us in the very first book, the book of Genesis, that when mankind decided to choose his own way instead of God's way, he sinned, death entered the picture. And in the New Testament, he said, all men have sinned. There's not a single righteous person, not one. And in fact, the wages of sin, the penalty and the result of sin is death. And on June 23rd, that's what Grandpa went through and experienced. Conjunctive word or simple, depending on what your grammatical persuasion is, that follows that phrase. The wages of sin is death, but this is probably the most glorious word in all of the Christian Bible. But because when you see that word, something good is following. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. These past ten years, I've um, had the absolute privilege to get really close to Grandpa. It started with just a couple phone calls while I was in school and college, and our relationship blossomed. Um, had a lot of good times, good experiences. One of the reasons that um, we got close, I think, is because we were similar in a lot of ways. So that's not exactly encouraging when you think about the things that I just listed about Dan Schiffler. But as I got close to him, I learned a lot more things about him also. You know, he had, he had things on the other side. Daryl mentioned a lot of them. The dude was hardworking. The dude was dedicated. Dan Schiffler was a consummate, disciplined man. He was strong in mind and body. He actually was very sensitive, in spite of what he came across as. He actually was a very sensitive soul and very caring in a lot of ways. And. My wife and I have the absolute privilege of being close to someone else in his life that kind of portrays the fact that he was a very, very loving man. We're close to 
grandma Linda. And just like Van Tipple did not have to be a grandfather, or did not have to be a dad to his stepsons, she did not have to be a grandma to any of us that are her grandchildren. Basically adopted her. Okay? And the relationship they had for nearly 47 years speaks not only to her character, but the character of Van Tipple. So, that doesn't matter. All that good stuff doesn't matter. Because categorically, Dan Schiffer was a sinner, just like me and just like you. Categorically, death is his reward. But, remember that word, but the gift of God is eternal life of Jesus Christ. The Lord. And that is the why for the, the third portion that Grandma wanted me to read. The good news, the hope instead of mourning, the rejoicing instead of the ashes, Part of our relationship, Grandpa and I, involved many conversations about this very thing, about death and life, death being the ultimate enemy, life being the ultimate good. Um, our conversations always revolve, usually revolve around his relationship with his Creator God and his Son Jesus Christ. The very issue of Dan Schiffler's everlasting life. Very issue of the opportunity for everlasting life is summed up in a, in a verse that really kind of encapsulates the gospel, the Bible, and it is, to be honest with you, very hard to understand. It's very hard for me to grasp. And I'll never stop trying to understand it, never stop trying to grasp it. It's a matter of faith. God's word is clear that without faith it is impossible to see God. And it's because of this verse. Here's the why. Here's the why for the good news in spite of death. Here's the why for the short rejoicing in spite of mourning. The why is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we might be viewed as the righteousness of God. I am categorically, categorically a sinful man. Grandpa was categorically a sinner. And the wages of my sin is death. But God made someone who was not a sinner, who categorically was righteous, He made him to be sin. That is so unfair. It's so unfair. It's so not right. It defies logic. Because 2020 years ago, there actually lived someone whose who's good didn't have to outweigh his bad because he had no bad. He was perfect. He lived for 33 years, walked on this earth, and then willingly subjected himself to death, death on a cross, and God made that person to be sin. Your sin your sin, my sin, Dan Schiffler's sin. He put that sin on him and the punishment for that sin on him. And that does not make any sense at all. Because Jesus Christ, that man, that God-man, who took that sin and the death that came from that sin, and then in three days defeated that death to where the Apostle Paul can say that death has no victory, Grave has no sting. It makes no sense at all. But he did that so that when there is a time of mourning, there is actually also reason to rejoice. When there is death in this life, there is actually the result of life in eternity with, with God. Those were good conversations that I had with Grandma many times. Pre 1980, 
that involves a burial scene. That is, I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And that is why there is hope. The book of Isaiah 61, that is why there is rejoicing instead of mourning. That is why there is a garland of praise instead of a robe of fainting and guilty and weariness. This year stinks. Death stinks. Death is the enemy. But death has been defeated. Death has been defeated. If you wouldn't mind, I'm going to pray. Almighty, merciful, and gracious God, thank you. Thank you for this unspeakable gift through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you that no matter what I do, I will never out sin your mercy. Thank you that no matter what I do, I can never earn your mercy. Thank you that no matter what our good or our bad, they don't matter. The scales that we set up in our mind of good outweighing the bad does not matter because you made him who was sinless to be our sin and took our death and punished him for that sin. We don't understand it. It is by faith that we accept this gift that you offer. I pray that if anyone here has not accepted it, that they would contemplate it, that they would consider it, a relationship with you, an almighty creator, perfect God, who demands righteousness, righteousness that we cannot give. Thank you, Jesus, for being that righteousness for us. Thank you for Dan Shipley. Thank you for what he has meant in the 85 years that he was here. Thank you for the blessing of family. We don't deserve any of the good things that you've given us. We definitely do not deserve to know and love him and to be known and loved by him. We commit the rest of this memorial to him and to your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Simplify. Who rock? Rock. Is that what he said? Who rock? Who rock? Who rock? Who rock? With your permission, may I lay up to his final resting place here on earth. If I may touch you one more time. Yes, ma'am. You guys can go ahead and once you're done, go ahead and go back to your car. I'll go over to where you're going to be laid to rest. Once we get there, you have to wait at your car for the guys to come up and get you and bring you up to the step where he's going to be Thank you guys for coming. All of you. And the sacrifices you made to get here. I love you all.